As I shared with you, parental alienation is a global epidemic. We have someone with us today who has devoted his life's work to the study and education of parental alienation. As the author of the best-selling book, Divorce Poison, and the groundbreaking DVD for children, Welcome Back Pluto, Dr. Richard Warshak is an internationally renowned author. As a clinical professor and consulting psychologist at the University of Texas Southwest Medical Center, Dr. Warshak has consulted at the White House, courts, and legislatures. Dr. Warshak can frequently be seen in the media and is highly sought after around the world for his knowledge. We are extremely fortunate to have Dr. Warshak here with us today. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Richard Warshak. Thanks so much, Wendy. <laughs> she was asking if I needed her to hold the umbrella for those of you who were here last year. Let me just start by saying 27 years ago, Richard Gardner introduced the term parental alienation syndrome. And last year, our attempts to raise awareness met with strong obstacles, both from those who deny this form of abuse and from the elements. The rain and strong winds beckoned us to fold up our tents and go home. We persisted. Someone held an umbrella. I did bring mine this time. Someone held my notebook with my remarks. We persisted. You know, the hardest part of writing a book is the middle. The beginning starts with enthusiasm. When the, end is, uh, when the end is inside, it's easy to keep going. So the beginning and the end are easier. But it's in the middle of the project when some of the enthusiasm is worn off and we're not close enough yet to the goal to feel that driving energy. And I think this is where the parental alienation awareness movement is today. We're in the middle. So to those who grow weary about reaching the end of this project, about society recognizing and responding to the emotional abuse of one parent depriving children of the other parent, I want to call your attention to some developments that signal that we are on the right track and that we simply need to persist on this course. First of all, uh, you may not know, but there are two books in for professionals on this topic that are currently in press, will be published later this year. And they're not by me, although I am contributing to one. This means that the word is getting out in the professional community. And there are other books in various stages of completion. I've been doing my part through my speeches, my book, my DVD, and my website. And in each of these, there are very exciting developments. The interest of judges and lawyers in learning about parental alienation is, is at an all-time high. Last year, I was invited to speak to several groups of judges and lawyers and did so. And I teach them a simple test to evaluate a child's wishes, uh, stated wishes, to avoid a parent. I call it the PASAT, the Parental Alienation School Avoidance Test. I advise judges that when you face an issue related to a child saying that he or she does not want to see a parent, substitute the word school for parent and the proper course of action may become clearer. If a child avoids a school, what would you do? If you see a parent supporting a child who wants to be truant, what would you do? Or if your child goes to school and a teacher badmouths the child's parent, what would happen to that teacher? In August, I'll be traveling to Houston to speak to an audience of over 1,000, the largest gathering of family lawyers in Texas. And appearing with me is a judge who routinely prescribes divorce poison and welcome back Pluto for parents in cases where allegations are raised of parental alienation. He certainly gets it. Less than two years ago, we created the DVD, Welcome Back Pluto. It's now in 21 countries across six continents. Some judges ask parents to write a book report and report on the DVD and on divorce poison. Counselors have children and teens watching the DVD. On May 20th, Divorce Poison comes out in its sixth translation. This edition in Japan, a country that harbors abducted and alienated children and is sorely in need of these ideas. And this is the first time I'm announcing in public, so you're all the first to learn, that Warshak.com, which has become the headquarters for parents and the press on parental alienation, 
has behind the scenes been undergoing a makeover for the past six months and sometime within the next month the new site will be launched making it easier than ever for people to learn about this terrible scourge. Judges and lawyers have shown great interest in learning more about the problem and this project is carrying throughout the world. Next month I'll be speaking at the University of Haifa in Israel. There's a great interest in this topic. Now the elements are telling us something. Uh, earlier in the day, at least uh, on the weather forecast, there were a few drops in certain areas of the Metroplex. The sun is out now, but we sure have uh, a, a strong wind, but nothing like the storm we survived last year. No umbrellas being inverted. We're not drenched. But we still have the wind, and we still have much about parental alienation that the public needs to know about. We are nearing the point where an explosion of awareness will beat back the denial of the problem. An early sign is that the voices that claim that parental alienation is a myth have gone relatively silent this past year. Among professionals, it is now universally accepted that, the, that divorce poison is real, that children can be manipulated by one parent to turn against the other. They continue to argue about how to label the problem, but surveys of mental health professionals and lawyers report near unanimous agreement that the problem exists. More courts, including higher courts, courts of appeal, Supreme Courts, are describing the problem as a basis for decisions that rescue children and help them reunite with a parent who is lost to them. These decisions will help your attorneys brief the court about the issue, and you can find them on my website. So there are positive developments all in the right direction. We're not there yet, but all signs point to a successful completion of this project. So I would like to set a goal. 2015 marks the 30th anniversary since Gardner introduced the term PAS. It will be the 10th anniversary of PAAO. Let's make 2015 our target for stopping this epidemic. I'm predicting, I'm making a weather forecast for April 25th, 2015. It'll be sunny with just a mild breeze. I'll see you all next year. Thank you so much, Dr. Warshak. Um, as I said, Dr. Warshak is internationally renowned. Um, he is highly sought after all over the world um, to educate uh, and to uh, give his knowledge. So we are so very fortunate to have him here with us today. Um, we're truly, truly blessed. And so uh, thank you so much. We really, really appreciate it. It means a lot. All right, so you guys heard it, 2000. All right, it's it's on video. He'll be back next year. <laughs> and 2015, that's our goal. So, hi, this is my friend Pam Bassler, <laughs> and she's been a very uh, important part of PAAO North Texas chapter. She gives a lot of her time to help. That's not why I came up here. I came up here to um, officially thank Wendy Archer for everything that she does for all of our kids, for all of us, for all of every everybody in the country. You guys don't know this probably, but she's actually been the spearhead of Bubbles of Love Day all over the country this year. And she's done an awesome job. She's been there to help everybody to walk them through how to do a Bubbles of Love Day, and she's amazing. And we're all just lucky that we live around her so we can be involved with her. And um, she's an awesome advocate for all of us, and we're all really lucky, and so these are for you. Thank you.